Hi friends, today I want to talk about meditation. Now, I've been meditating for quite a few years now and it's changed my life. I'm a huge proponent of meditation and I've been wanting to write about it for quite a while, but it's a pretty broad topic and there's so many things I want to say. So I'm kind of excited to just talk about it over video. So I'm going to take it piece by piece. The first thing I really want to talk about, which is something I think is the most important is why meditate? You know, what's the point? And I think there's a few misconceptions about this. So I want to talk about that. Misconceptions, excuse me. Um, there's three main reasons that I think you should meditate. You know, there's obviously tons of possible other reasons that people have and you're, you know, you can explore all of those. I'm actually only going to talk about one of them today, but just at a high level, the first one is people meditate a lot for stress relief, right? And I think this isn't actually the greatest reason um, to meditate because from a stress relief perspective, I mean, it's pretty similar. You're basically pausing, you know, taking breaths, you're slowing things down, um, but you could do that anyway. You could lie down, you could go for a walk. There's lots of ways to de-stress. And a lot of times meditation isn't really de-stressing. For a lot of people, it's quite stressful. Um, you know, and, and for me, it is sometimes too, you're kind of sitting there and you're really being immersed with these thoughts. And, and if, if you were already stressed, you're kind of just sitting with all of those. So it's not always a great technique for that. Um, so the second reason that a lot of people kind of hear about meditation is more of a spiritual, uh, motivation, right? Seeking out enlightenment or discovering meaning and, and sort of you know, other sort of layers of our existence. And, and that is really, really big scope, um, which I'm not gonna talk about here, but it's definitely a, a key part of why a lot of people meditate. But the third reason is why I primarily uh, am drawn to meditation and, and why I think is, what I think is the kind of the most compelling motivation for doing it. And that is that it really changes how you think and how you behave. Um, and there's actually science behind a lot of this in terms of how it literally rewires parts of your brain as you do it. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the technical details here, but here's what I mean. So one of the things that happens a lot throughout our day is we run into situations, we run into, you know, interactions uh, that kind of trigger us. And we typically react kind of immediately we react almost instinctively no matter what happens we just kind of fire back right and you know you've seen this where you're sort of in a heated discussion with someone and they just say something and, and you kind of like oh, i really wish i didn't say that which is kind of strange it's you know if if you wish you didn't say that 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 means you're sort of not in control of your own mind and body right which is kind of an odd thing i mean if you think about how often does that happen um you know, and what are the implications of that? Shouldn't we really be in control? Um, and what, what ends up happening is that you really don't have time. Um, your, your sort of mind isn't trained to sort of think and process before you react uh, because we're so overwhelmed, especially today with, you know, uh, all of the devices that we use constantly, all the inputs and constant multitasking that we're doing we're kind of just training ourselves to just quickly react to things, you know, just response, 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 response. There's not really much time to, to think and, and be, you know, be more, I guess, uh, thoughtful about what we want to do. And so that's where meditation can be really helpful. So if you think about meditation, one of the exercise, part of the core part of the exercise is that, you know, you sit, you breathe, and you allow your thoughts to kind of come through. Uh, a lot of folks think that, you know, the goal is to like get rid of your thoughts. It's definitely not that. Uh, I highly recommend that you do not try to do that because the more you try and erase those thoughts, the stronger they're going to bubble up. And, you know, the thing to really uh, do is sort of just observe them and acknowledge them. Um, I'm actually going to do another video where I talk about specifically uh, meditation techniques, sort of how I meditate and, and some tips on that. But a key part of what happens is that you learn through practice to see your thoughts kind of come in and just sort of float away, right? And that's hard to do sometimes because 
Sometimes those thoughts are, you know, things that triggered you earlier or things that you're scared or worried about in the future. And so you feel like you need to react to them, you know? Um, and so over time, you start to develop this capability to not just rely on the sort of reactive part of your brain, but to kind of allow the contextual side of your brain um, to kind of help play a bigger role. And so in this way, meditation is practice for that, that you can then use throughout the day. So uh, like I mentioned, you know, there's, there's actually a great book about this, um, which I'll link to here called The Mind Illuminated. It talks a lot more about technique. Um, but, but one of the things that it mentions is that the more you train yourself to pause, not immediately react uh, and, and sort of like allow thoughts to come in, the stronger that side of your brain becomes, the stronger the ability to apply context. And so I'll give you an example of how I knew this was helpful to me. Um, one day I was kind of sitting around, you know, I received a, a text from a friend and, you know, it's someone who I care about. And, you know, they just said something that was pretty rude and it really triggered me. And, you know, immediately sort of, you know, I could feel myself sort of heating up and, getting ready with my response of what I'm going to say back. But, you know, I had been meditating a lot up to that point, and suddenly I sort of paused and just sort of observed myself in this moment, observed myself about to counterattack this person. And instead what I did was just kind of dive a little deeper into, like, why would this person say that? And I realized there were a lot of mitigating circumstances um, in their in their life that that led to them doing that and this was kind of their cry for help and so i took a slightly different tack with this message and and you know they they really opened up and shared now does this have does this mean that like oh any attack you should just try and look at it from their view and forgive them no of course not but i think you would agree that we often find ourselves in situations where you know, something happens to us and then we react in a way that we didn't want. And then suddenly, you know, we're apologizing for how we reacted. And that's just really not a good feeling. It just feels like we're not in control of ourselves, you know, and, and, and the consequences that, that result in that can be really difficult. And I definitely noticed the opposite. So, you know, I, obviously I try to meditate as often as I can. I try every day if I can, but I'm human. I don't do it every day. And sometimes I miss it for a prolonged period and I notice. I noticed that I'm more reactive. Um, and we have to be careful here where, you know, if you've been meditating a bunch and then you still have, it doesn't mean that you're just this perfect, you know, monk that's never going to react to anything, right? Like that, that, that's not to be expected. And sometimes you can kind of push yourself too far. And I've definitely found myself in situations where I, I reacted to something poorly and I'm like, God, someone like you meditate, you, you know better, you should be, you know, stronger. And, and that can be a problem in of itself where you're just, you know, you're applying yourself, uh, you know, applying standards a little bit too harshly to yourself. So I think the key, you know, is really to just recognize that it's a, it's a tool and, you know, it's a form of exercise just like anything else um, in this particular context. Uh, you know, you can view meditation in many ways, but I think in terms of building sort of awareness and ability to pause and observe and, and be less reactive and more contextual in sort of our behavior, um, this is something that can be trained over time and it can also be untrained, you know, when you stop doing it or you're not doing it as much, you can notice. But the key is that you will notice, right? It's so far, everything is just sort of happening and, and you're sort of behaving on an automatic mode and you're not actually even seeing this. So the minute you start seeing it, that's a real huge, huge change that will never go away. You will always have that visibility. You may not, you may say, well, I know, I'm not, you know, as, as common even as I was at this point, but now you have the awareness of that. And that's really powerful. And I think that's probably the most compelling reason for a consistent practice of meditation. And, you know, some people ask like, how often should you meditate? How long should you meditate? All these types of things. You know, something is better than nothing. Even five minutes is better than nothing. But the more time that you spend in the session, I typically do about 20 minutes. Uh, I've done hour long ones before, but I typically do about 20 minutes, which is long enough for me to kind of let all the thoughts sort of come in and eventually they sort of kind of run out. Um, 
So there are some tips of how to make you know a meditation session a little bit more um, conducive to some of these goals. I don't want to use the word effective because I think different people have different goals and and you know the way one person meditates is going to be very different than the way you do because you might be trying to achieve different things. So um, look out for that other video I'm going to post after this. But hopefully uh, you've gotten at least a little sense of why you know meditating can help you become more in control of yourself, uh, which I think is 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 really important. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you at the next video.